Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite examples in all of calculus, Gabriel's horn. Now the way this example works is I begin with the function 1 over x. And I'm considering this under the infinite domain of x equal to 1 all the way to x equal to infinity. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this curve and I'm going to revolve it around the x-axis. And this is going to form a surface. Now this looks a little bit like the horn of a trumpet or whatever. But because going from 1 all the way to infinity, there's this sort of infinite horn. That's what we call Gabriel's horn. Now, I find this surface really interesting because of the following fact. There's two different types of things I might want to measure. I might want to measure the surface area of this infinite horn, or I might want to measure the volume that is inscribed within that surface. These are two different computations. Now, when we first started with improper integrals, where the domain was infinite, we saw that sometimes they converged and sometimes they diverged. Now, the magic of Gabriel's horn is that the surface area of this thing, it actually diverges to infinity. It has an infinite surface area. The improper integral we will set up for it diverges. But that the volume that is contained within this infinite surface area is somehow finite, that it converges to a finite number over this infinite domain. It's really interesting. So let's see how we can do that. There are two different formulas that we have to describe these two different things, the surface area and the volume. The surface area formula, we've just seen that in the previous video, the integral from a up to b of 2 pi f of x, I'm thinking that's my circumference with radius f of x, and then multiplied by this little arc length thing, the square root of the 1 plus the derivative squared. But back in calculus 1, we had seen a formula for the volume of a region of revolution. And the formula we saw in calculus 1 is it's the integral of pi f of x squared. The way we derived that formula is we thought of adding up a whole bunch of little disks. The width of all the little disks was dx, but that the area of the disk was going to be pi the radius squared. So pi f of x squared in this case. All right, so let's actually compute them out. So for the first one, the surface area, let me plug in 1 up to infinity, and I'll put in the specific function f of x equal to 1 of x. I plug that in. And likewise, I'll do that for my volume formula, 1 up to infinity again, and again, the function 1 over x, now squared. Let's do the surface area one first. So this is an improper integral. So I can use the comparison test. If all I care about is whether it converges or whether it diverges, then I can use this comparison test. So what I'm going to do is, you see the big square root stuff? All of that is actually positive. I don't know exactly what the positive number is, but it's, it's always bigger than 1 because the derivative part is squared and then you add that to 1. So this is for sure something bigger than 1. So this improper integral that I have is bigger than the improper integral that's just 2 pi 1 over x. But that's one I can do. What was the definition of improper integrals? Well, instead of the infinity up here in one of my limits of integration, I'm going to replace it with t, and I'm going to put a limit as t goes to infinity out the front. And then I can integrate 1 over x. It's going to be logarithm, and I can plug in the value of t, which is always positive. I can plug in the value of 1. Logarithm of 1 is 0. And so I just get the limit as t goes to infinity of 2 pi logarithm of t. And because of the shape of logarithm, as t diverges, logarithm does as well, so this is just equal to infinity. So this is my computation that the surface area of Gabriel's horn is infinite. All right, wonderful, but what about the volume it contains? Well, the volume was given by this formula here. Now again, this is an improper integral, so by definition, this is the limit as t goes to infinity of 1 up to t of pi of 1 over x squared. and then this is just something I can go and integrate. What am I going to get? The limit as t goes to infinity of minus pi over x evaluated between t and 1. I can plug those numbers in and I can take t to infinity because the t is on the bottom, it goes to 0 and I just get the value of pi. So this is kind of crazy. What do I have in this? I have an infinite surface area, a surface area that diverges as you send the domain off to positive infinity. But the volume that is inscribed within it, that turns out to be exactly the value of pi. So perhaps the big lesson here is that when we saw improper integrals, we saw that sometimes they converge and sometimes they diverge. It depended on the specifics of the function. It depended on how fast they were collapsing down to zero. 
So in this geometric problem, when we're contrasting surface area and we're contrasting volume, indeed the intervals that come out of that, the volume one is compressing fast enough that it converges to pi, while the surface area one is not and it diverges to infinity. So I just think that's a really cool example. I hope you enjoyed.